You know, there is a big connection between complex numbers and geometry. And I always find this really beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Especially when you come to inversive geometry and see how that can be encoded using complex numbers. So, encoded using complex numbers. I'll tell you what this means, all of these things mean, but we will do that using an application problem from ISI entrance. Okay, so it's also useful for kids who are preparing for Math Olympiad. We discuss inversive geometry and the relation of complex numbers and geometry in our Math Olympiad program and ISI and CMI entrance program. So you can check that out with the link in the description. Uh, so, what is this problem? To understand the problem, I have to first tell you the relationship between the complex numbers z and 1 over z bar. These are the two very interesting uh, pieces of complex numbers. They have a very beautiful relationship in that they are inverses of each other inverses of each other now what does that mean well here is a quick primer on, on inversive geometry inversion is a map is a map that sends a point P to a point Q so you'd have the plane, you have a point P, inversion will tell you where to send this point P. What is the image of this point P? So every point in the plane is mapped somewhere. That's why we call it a map. In fact, I can say it's a map from R2 to R2. If I'm just looking at inversions on the plane, but you will soon realize it's not the entirety of R2, it's actually R2 minus the origin. So, but let's not go into very uh, intricate details of this. I'll just explain what inversion is quickly. So, what is the image? What is the image of P? Well, what you do is, here is a prescription of finding the image. You mark the origin, you join OP, you extend it, and you find a point Q up here, such that the length of OP times the length of OQ is 1. Then we say Q is the invert inversion of P. Q is the image. This point Q is the image of the point P. So for the point P, I calculated the length of OP and I extended the segment OP to a ray. I found another point Q such that this product is equal to 1. Okay, so if you look at a circle of unit radius, This is known as the circle of inversion, circle with radius 1. Actually, we could do inversion with radius r instead of radius 1, but I'm not going into complications now. So, essentially, that's the same thing, but sort of the scaled up version of it. So, you take the center O, this is 1. Now, if you take a point inside the circle, Notice that OP is less than 1, of course, because it's inside the circle, so it's less than the radius. So Q must be outside the circle. So OQ is here, somewhere. As close you get to the origin, Q gets that much far away. So 
because OQ is then greater than 1, something less than 1 times something greater than 1 can be made into equal to 1. So OP times OQ, if you want that to be 1, and if OP is less than 1, OQ must be greater than 1, right? So points inside are sent to the points outside the circle. Of course, P is the P is the inverted image of Q. And Q is the inverted image of P. So Q is sent to P, P is sent to Q and so on. Okay, now we understand that what inversion is, it's a map which does send some points in the every point in the plane except the origin can anyone tell me why am i saying except origin why is there no image of the origin under inversion you can say this you can think about it and tell me this thing in the comment so except the origin all the points are sent to some image points okay so we understand inversion now we have to look at z and 1 over z bar these two complex numbers z is any complex number and after you compute z you take z bar 1 by z bar so if you learn complex numbers using rotation and dilation that's how you should learn complex numbers rotation and dilation or sometimes known as spiral similarity similarity then z if it is r comma theta that is if you take the coordinate axis then this point z makes theta angle with the positive direction of x-axis and has a length r this length of this segment is r from the origin then 1 over z is simply 1 over r comma negative theta so if you don't know why this is true then you will need to learn a little bit more complex numbers this is negative theta and this is 1 over r. In my picture, I'm assuming r is greater than 1. So, 1 over r is smaller than 1. But it could be otherwise. One R could be less than 1, then 1 over r will be longer. And if you do 1 over z bar, you are basically reflecting this thing around x-axis. So, you're back here. So now you are at this particular point, 1 over z bar. And 1 over z bar has length r, length 1 over r, the length of the point from the origin. And it makes the same theta angle with the x-axis. So the point I'm trying to make is that 1 over z bar is the inverted image of z inverted image of z okay so that's great because now we know how inversions work and now we know how to do that using complex numbers you can also do the traditional thing you can write z equals to x plus i y and then compute 1 by z bar and whatever the expression is from that you can actually deduce the same result all right now we are ready to talk about the problem